From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! I need to do more to help fix this broken immigration system. And so I decided then that I would participate in the Fast for Families. And this Fast first and foremost for me is a renewal of my commitment to justice, to making sure that this immigration system is fixed once and for all. As the House of Representatives ends its session for the year without passing immigration reform, we speak to labor leader Eliseo Medina, who's helped lead a month-long hunger fast on the Mall for immigration reform. He joined the labor movement four decades ago, working alongside Cesar Chavez. Then as South Africa prepares for the funeral of Nelson Mandela, we look back at how African-American workers at Polaroid helped launch the divestment movement against apartheid in South Africa in the early 70s. We'll speak with Caroline Hunter, co-founder of the Polaroid Workers Revolutionary Movement, who opposed Polaroid making photos for the ID passbooks for blacks under apartheid. And by whatever means necessary, we have found that the corporations, the government, the forces of imperialism have aligned against the African people. Mm. And what we're calling for is the same tactic. By whatever means necessary that we as an African people align ourselves, understand the seriousness of the struggle. And we look at how the CIA helped South Africa capture Nelson Mandela in 1962. He was then imprisoned for over 27 years. During much of that time, the National Security Agency also helped surveil the African National Congress. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A U.S. drone attack in Yemen struck a group of people who were traveling to a wedding Thursday, killing at least 17. A Yemeni security official said some of the dead may have been members of al-Qaeda, but most were civilians. The attack occurred in a remote area near the central town of Rada. It was at least the second U.S. drone strike in Yemen this year, after an attack in an eastern province killed at least three people uh, this week, uh, since uh, an attack killed at least three people on Monday. In Ukraine, mass protests are continuing over the government's decision not to sign a trade pact with the European Union. But speaking in Brussels on Thursday, Ukraine's first deputy prime minister said Ukraine will sign the deal soon. We listen to the Ukrainian people, and our negotiations will continue. Ukraine will soon sign this association agreement with the European Union, taking into account the national strategic interest. Thailand's military chiefs have agreed to meet with the leader of a mass protest movement seeking to replace the government with an unelected council. Prime Minister Ying Lak Shinawat has dissolved parliament, but is resisting calls for her immediate resignation. Protesters remain camped outside of her offices in Bangkok. The United Nations has released a long-awaited report confirming chemical weapons were likely used in Syria in five out of seven of the attacks it investigated. The attacks include the well-known incident at Ghouta and two others that appeared to target Syrian soldiers. The U.N. did not say who it believed was behind the attack. A new report says an American captured in Iran nearly seven years ago was working for the CIA. Robert Levinson disappeared after arriving on the Iranian island of Kish to spy on the Iranian government. The CIA told Congress and the FBI he did not have a relationship to the agency at the time, but the Associated Press reveals Levinson went to Iran at the behest of CIA analysts. Officials have cast the mission as a rogue operation, saying the analysts lacked the authority to authorize it, but the analysts claim many people knew knew about it. The AP says it confirmed Levinson's CIA ties in 2010, but agreed to delay revealing them three times at the behest of the Obama administration, which said it was pursuing leads for his return. There's been no sign of Levinson whether he is alive for the last three years. North Korea says the uncle of its leader, Kim Jong-un, has been executed for plotting a military coup. The state-run news agency said Jang sun tuk was killed Thursday after being convicted of treason. He was previously seen as one of North Korea's most powerful figures. <clears throat> 
The Republican-led House has approved a bipartisan budget deal to avert another government shutdown. The bill eases across-the-board spending cuts, replacing them with new airline fees and cuts to federal pensions. In a concession by Democrats, it does not extend unemployment benefits for 1.3 million people, which are set to expire this month. House Speaker John Boehner denounced far-right groups that have criticized the bill. Frankly, I think they're misleading uh, uh, their followers. I think they're uh, pushing our members in places where they don't want to be. And frankly, I just uh, think that uh, uh, they've lost all credibility. You know, well, they, they pushed us into this fight uh, to defund Obamacare and to shut down the government. Uh, most of you know, my members know, that wasn't exactly the strategy that I had in mind. Uh, but uh, if you'll recall, the day before the government reopened, uh, one of the people at one of these groups stood up and said, well, we never really thought it would work. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The House also passed a Pentagon bill that would keep Guantanamo open and keep military sexual assault cases within the chain of command, while making it more difficult for commanding officers to toss out verdicts. The U.S. general who opened Guantanamo in 2002 is calling for the prison to be closed. In a piece published by the Detroit Free Press, retired Major General Michael Lennart wrote, quote, in retrospect, the entire detention and interrogation strategy was wrong. We squandered the goodwill of the world after we were attacked on 9-11 by our actions in Guantanamo, both in terms of detention and torture. Our decision to keep Guantanamo open has helped our enemies because it validates every negative perception of the United States. Leonard also criticized what he called an unwise and unnecessary ban on transferring prisoners to the United States, which is part of the new Pentagon bill. The sign language interpreter who was accused of botching Nelson Mandela's memorial service, says he was suffering hallucinations as a result of schizophrenia. Tamsanka Janchi defended his credentials, but said he saw angels entering FNB Stadium in Soweto, where he stood on stage next to President Obama and other world leaders. He apologized for his signing, which apparently amounted to gibberish. It was the most uh, terrible day of my life. As we've seen the results as it came to the whole newspapers, but uh, uh, in brief on that day in question, my state of my physical state was not fine, but it's not a, a justification of everything, but it's just I want to put it in the clarity that I was not fine on the day in question. A South African official said the owners of the company the interpreter worked for appear to have vanished. Tens of thousands of people have continued lining up to pay their last respects to Nelson Mandela as his body lies in state in Pretoria for a third and final day. Mandela will be transferred this afternoon to his childhood home in Kunu, where he will be buried on Sunday. Israel shelved plans for a mass expulsion of Bedouin Arabs following massive protests. The so-called Prarpan would raise Bedouin villages in the Negev desert and replace them with Israeli settlements, displacing tens of thousands of people. The Ecuadorian government has shut down an environmental group that opposed its plans to allow oil drilling in swaths of the Amazon rainforest. The Pachamama Foundation says police closed the group's offices last week and presented them with a resolution saying the group was dissolved. The group was one of many protesting plans to drill in Yasuni National Park, an area renowned for its biological diversity. A Texas teenager from a wealthy family who killed four people while driving drunk will avoid a prison sentence following claims he suffered from affluenza. 16-year-old Ethan Couch was speeding with a blood alcohol level more than three times the legal limit during the June crash. Prosecutors sought a 20-year sentence, but Couch was sentenced to 10 years probation after a psychologist testified his wealthy parents had not set limits on his behavior. CNN's Anderson Cooper questioned the psychologist. A 14-year-old African-American child was sentenced by this same judge uh, a year or two ago. This 14-year-old uh, killed one person, punching him. That person fell and, and hit his head on the sidewalk and died. That African-American child got 10-year sentence, got sent to the juvenile justice facility. I mean, why, why should there be a separate well, system just because you have money? I don't think there is a separate system. This young man will be a ward of the state for 10 years, Anderson. 10 he's years that if he missteps any time, that judge can send him to the penitentiary.
Couch will reportedly be attending a rehab facility that costs $450,000 a year. In New York, a Domino's pizza store has agreed to reinstate 25 workers who say they faced retaliation for protesting unfair wages and treatment. The workers say managers cut their delivery shifts after they participated in a nationwide day of action to demand a living wage last week. Worker Byron Solorzano said he was forced to work longer shifts inside, where he doesn't receive tips. And I told them, that's not fair. I don't making enough money in here. I had to go out and do deliveries, because that's where I make my money. They said, no, go finish your job. So they did the same thing to another guy. They told him, go wash the dishes. Don't go outside until you finish doing the dishes. So we all got together and said, this is an abuse. They retaliating against us right now. The workers walked off the job in protest Saturday night and were then barred from returning to work. On Thursday, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman said the store had agreed to reinstate the workers. And Saturday marks one year since the massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School that killed six educators and 20 first graders. On Thursday, relatives of gun violence victims from around the country gathered at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C., for a vigil. Gilles Rousseau, father of slain Sandy Hook teacher Lauren Rousseau, addressed the gathering. We are here today with the common goal of remembering our loved ones and seeking to make our world a safer place. Acts of kindness and efforts to promote just cause are the best way to keep the memory of the victim of gun violence alive. I will remember. Since Newtown, Congress has not passed any legislation on gun control apart from the extension of a decades-long ban on plastic guns. A recent New York Times analysis found nearly two-thirds of gun laws passed by states since Newtown have loosened gun restrictions. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global grassroots news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org today. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.